When creating even a simple AI for your game, you usually want to have a way to detect different objects of interest like obstacles, enemies or the player. What we need to have is a way to sense or detect whatever is of interest to us. The best way to approach creating those from the standpoint of architecture of your game is to have a separate sensor object. All we need to have is a bull flag, something like player detected, that will inform us if we indeed have detected a player or not, and a transform reference or a game object reference called for example target to direct our player or our enemy to move in the direction of the target. Now to use this sort of a sensor class, we would need to have something like AI brain class. Now this AI brain would be a high level class that would control the enemy actions like moving or shooting or whatever you need to have. And this would have access to our AI sensors so that we can reuse our AI sensors for different enemies or for different implementations depending on what we want to have in our game, but basically this gives us this modular approach of creating our AI. Now in this video of course we are going to focus on creating our AI sensors. One example would be a simple box collider that is a trigger that would detect when our boss enemy should approach or uh, should start walking towards the player and this should only happen when our player is in range here where our boss enemy can reach our player. So if I switch to game view, if I jump here, our boss enemy will start attacking and charging at the player because it knows that the player is here in this range. And here is the player in area is said to be true. And to detect the player, I'm using a tag comparison. So here is the script AI player enter area detector. And what we have here is a bull flag that we can access. Uh, this is a uh, public property that is privately set and a player transform reference that we can also access. Now I'm using a tag to compare when we call on trigger enter 2D and on trigger exit 2D because we are using the default box collider 2D that is a trigger and we are going to check if the collision compare tag is of type detection tag and only then I can set the bull flag to be true and the player the transform reference to be collision game object the transform and this is one downside of this approach because we are going to basically detect all the collisions and every time there is a collision we are going to check uh, the compared tag of the objects that are colliding and on exit we would simply set the player in area to false and the transform reference to be null while we can provide a tag here this was specifically created to detect if player enters the area to make our script more reusable, we can use the same box collider that is a trigger, but instead of calling specific functionality or saving the player transform or is the player detected, we can expose unity events. So for example, on trigger enter event and on trigger exit event that will call specific code that we want to call whenever, for example, the player using the same method comparing the target tag, when the player enters this collider, we want to invoke all of those methods. And let's see the script. So the script itself will be simply called onTrigger to the util, and of course this would work for 3D as well. And instead of exposing here a bool and a transform or a game object, we are going to have a public Unity event, and this is inside a Unity engine .events library. And this will simply create a, in the inspector a window where we can assign a game object and call on it a public method. And this will basically be called whenever something triggers the collider or when something exits the collider. And basically this makes it the script more reusable, for example, if you want to create some sort of logic to open the doors whenever the player is closed or to make something appear. Now still we have one more issue that this is pretty inefficient because we keep those colliders on all the time but our player will not constantly walk in and out of this collider. It will happen probably once on, uh, during the game or something like this. So to, how can we make this code more efficient? Well instead of using a collider to do the task of detecting our player we can recast a boxcast or overlap boxcast 
to detect our player and we can specify how often we want to box cast this. So in our case, when I enter this area, this will turn red and our enemy will start attacking us and it will rotate towards the player. So basically this contains a reference to a player as well as it knows if the player is in range or not. In both physics and physics 2D libraries, we have those box cast and overlap box methods. And in case of physics 2D, I am using this overlap box uh, method. Now this allows us to create a box, basically a box collider, but only temporarily defining its point. So this is the origin, a size, an angle, as well as the layer mask. So instead of comparing a tag, we can provide a layer mask and we can ensure that our box cast or overlap box will only detect the colliders on our specific uh, layer. As well as it can work with Z axis in a 2D environment. And this can be very useful when you want to detect if something is underneath or above a collider. Now the code implementation is a bit longer and this is because uh, to cast a box cast, we need to predefine a lot of parameters that uh, for the box collider 2D we can define in the inspector. We have our bull flag player detected and the vector 2 direction to target that we can calculate by getting the reference to a, a target that is here, the game object target. And uh, beside that, we can use a coroutine to simply perform the detection depending on a detection delay. So basically we can detect our player or whatever we want to detect in an interval instead of constantly. So this can boost the performance of our AI system detecting uh, every 0.3 of a second. So we will start the coroutine, start detection, yield return a new wait for seconds detection delay, and we can call perform detection. And after we do, we can restart our coroutine. And this perform detection will do basically the same thing that we do with our uh, box collider. We are going to define a center point where we should call uh, create our overlap box. And this will be the origin point of the game object plus the detector origin offset. And we are going to provide the detector size. So this will be the box size, the angle and the detector layer mask. And what we can do is simply check if collider is not equal to null, we can set the target to be this game object, else we can set it to be null. Now, as I already said, one downside is that we need to define all of those vector twos, like the offset and the size, inside our class, as well as we will need to have a gizmo to show our uh, result. So what, where is this box cast or overlap box? being casted. So this uh, defines a idle color and detected color and show gizmos in case we do not want to show our gizmo. And we are going to simply need to call private void on draw gizmo method uh, that allows us to draw gizmos. And basically what I do is check if I want to show gizmos and if the detector origin is not null. And in this case, I want to set the color of the gizmo depending on if the player is detected or not. And I want to call gizmo.drawcube. So this is a bit more work, but uh, as a result, of course, we can create this kind of mechanic that uh, debugs us if the player is detected or not. And this is really useful when you do not detect the player when the enemy is sending idle. This way we know that the detector is working correctly and there is something wrong with our AI and not the detector itself. Okay, so this is great, we have our detector. What would be the example of using those detectors? Because we of course need to have some AI structure that will make use of those detectors. So an example would be a simple top-down game where we have our enemy and when we press play, the enemy will not see us because we are out, uh, behind the obstacle, but when it sees us, it starts to chase us. Now, in addition to that, we have a smaller detector to detect if you are in the range of attack. So if we stand still and the detector reaches our player, we will get into the attack range and we are going to get attacked. Now, if we run away from our enemy, now we are not being chased because we are outside of the detection range of our enemy. Now, another way to implement those detectors is by attaching one to a enemy. 
Now this is a patrolling enemy and this is a detector of this circle cast I think or overlap circle and basically whenever it detects that I am in range it will perform an attack and it will continue walking. So this is a very simple uh, AI system but this allows this uh, enemy to decide if we are in range of the attack so if we are too far there is no point in attacking us but if we are close enough then it can perform the attack and play the attack animation. And this detector simply has a target layer to detect, uh, uh, instead of using a tag it uses a layer and has on player detected event that we can call whenever we have detected our layer. And let's see the script here. And basically this is very uh, similar to what we have previously. All we have here is a radius instead of a size and we are calling overlap circle method to cast a circle cast. And again, we need to implement a gizmo to show whether we are colliding or to show the gizmo itself so that we know how to move it or how to change the radius to place our detector. And inside the game itself, we can see that our detector is simply a game object that we can move around and we can move it. And this is a child of a, an enemy, so we can move it outside and as you can see it is further so now we do not have a need to add an offset to the script instead we are simply changing the position of the game object itself and it is casting from the center of the game object the uh, overlap circle cast great thanks for watching i hope this video gave you some ideas on how you can implement player detection system in your game if you want to learn more about AI and how to develop 2D games in Unity, you can check out my video courses, the link will be in the description of this video. If you want to see more AI related content on my YouTube channel, let me know down in the comments. Take care!